रोड मैप्स द मेयर मैंशन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड गिवस नाइट मेयर्स और एटलीस्ट अ फ्यू स्लीपलेस नाइट्स टू प्रोडक्ट मैनेजर्स वेन दे आर आस्क टू मेक देयर फर्स्ट रोड मैप सो टूडे वी गो नॉट टॉक अबाउट हाउ टू क्रिएट अ रोड मैप एंड दैट टू विदाउट एनी फैंसी रोड मैपिंग टूल्स हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू प्रोडक्ट इज लाइफ यू आर वन स्टॉप शॉप फॉर एनीथिंग एंड एवरी थिंग अबाउट प्रोडक्ट मैनेजमेंट एज अ जूनियर प्रोडक्ट मैनेजर यू प्रॉबेबली वोट बी आस्क टू मेक अ रोड मैप येट एज एट दैट लेवल योर जॉब इज मोर फोकस्ड ऑन एग्जीक्यूशन एंड स्प्रिंट मैनेजमेंट काइंड ऑफ स्टफ बट एज यू ग्रो इन योर करियर एज अ प्रोडक्ट मैनेजर यू वुड बी एक्सपेक्टेड टू हैव मोर स्ट्रेटेजिक रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज एंड वन सच मेजर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इज मेकिंग अ रोड मैप फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू नीड टू क्लियरली अंडरस्टैंड वट एग्जैक्टली इज अ रोड मैप एंड नॉट बी स्केयर्ड और वरीड दैट दिस इज अ वेरी कॉम्प्लेक्स टास्क एज आई ब्रीफली टॉक अबाउट रोड मैप इन द कॉमन प्रोडक्ट मैनेजमेंट कॉन्सेप्ट वीडियो a road map is basically a list of items that you have planned to work on in a certain defined time duration if i were to oversimplify it then a road map is just a fancy name for a to do list but to create this fancy to do list from the never ending list of tasks that you have in your backlog you will have to rely on a bunch of factors some of them are problem statement validation is the problem actually worth solving does it align with your business strategy and offers any value to your user base for example if someone at amazon comes up with the idea that hey let's start selling cars on amazon then the product manager needs to decide on the validity of this problem statement of selling cars online for amazon intuitively i would also think that this is probably not a good idea to sell cars on amazon but still you may want to think about some factors like do people prefer buying cars or other automobiles online are those people part of amazon's current user base or is it a new user segment you want to tap etc eventually the decision may still come out to be that we should not sell cars on amazon but still it's a good practice to back your decision with some logic maybe in the form of user feedback via surveys or interviews or through some data analysis now you may say that i can't keep doing data analysis on each and every bizarre request that comes my way that will eat up all my bandwidth and you are somewhat right in saying that but my experience is that in practice the requests that come your way are really going to be so bizarre that you just intuitively reject them i mean just taking forward our previous example of selling cars on amazon one can always argue why not some of the other e-commerce platforms like ebay or taobao are actually doing it they are in fact selling aeroplanes as well in fact one of the most expensive products ever sold on ebay till date is a private jet worth approximately 5 million dollars rejecting ideas based on intuition at times opens up the risk of missing out on future innovation history is filled with examples of people rejecting disruptive innovative ideas just on intuition right from the times of hp rejecting the apple one personal computer to somewhat as recent as intel missing out on the ai rally next is tam or total addressable market tam can be defined in terms of the number of users or through a dollar value as in assuming you have a 100% market share how many users can this product potentially impact or what's the potential revenue opportunity through this product bigger the tam higher the priority impact estimation this is the potential impact on a specific business metric that you are trying to improve by launching this product for example increase the revenue by 10% or increase the d1 user retention by 5% etc important versus urgent everything important is not always urgent and everything urgent may not always be important for example if you are planning to launch a new business vertical or enter a new geography with a long term game plan then you may not want to rush it and if that means taking an extra couple of weeks or months to be really thorough with your research then that's fine so this is something that is important but not urgent on the other hand if let's say your company changed their registered business address then you do need to urgently update the same at multiple places across your website and app as a regulatory requirement but it certainly is not going to have any impact on your dow or your daily sales figures so this is an example of something that is urgent but not important complexity of the product if it's a simple product with a quick implementation then you may still want to prioritize it even though the potential impact may not be significant 
Now, a very important factor while actually creating a roadmap is the duration you are considering. Because in the absence of a defined duration, a roadmap is just like daydreaming. It's like saying Tesla has flying cars in their roadmap. Now, there's a decent probability that we'll eventually get there, but the duration is what makes it real. Is it gonna be one year or 10 years or 100 years? Now, people make all types of roadmaps, right from a one month roadmap to a five year roadmap. But the pace at which the tech landscape is changing, a roadmap beyond a certain duration really doesn't make much sense. Thus, I think a five year roadmap is pretty much useless nowadays. There may be very few select industries like manufacturing or healthcare where a five year roadmap maybe makes more sense as they involve high upfront R&D cost, both in terms of time and money. I personally prefer to have a one year roadmap for long term strategic goals and a three month roadmap for short term execution goals. The long term roadmap would include projects with strategic or business goals. You don't need to lay out the complete final details of this roadmap yet as this roadmap may keep evolving throughout the year based on new developments. But this should give a clear idea of the theme or the kind of projects you would want to focus on strategically for this year. For example, if the business goal for this year is to achieve profitability, then you may want to focus on projects like increasing ARPU, your average revenue per user, or reducing user acquisition cost, or reducing returns and refunds, etc. If the business goal is growth, then you may want to focus on increasing DAO or MAO or an incentive driven user referral program or building a coupon or a discount flow in the system. The short term roadmap has much more finer details like TAM, effort estimation, impact estimation, etc. Taking forward our example from our long term roadmap earlier, if one of the long term goals is to increase ARPU, then you can achieve that by increasing the number of orders from a user or by increasing the average order value. And you can increase the average order value by pushing the users to buy higher priced items by highlighting the USPs of quality, service, etc. Or you can also increase the average order value by recommending associated products to users. For example, if you buy X, then you should also buy Y kind of logic. Now, all these three approaches are valid ways of increasing the ARPU. But to decide on which approach should you focus on is when you get into the finer details like TAM, effort estimation, impact estimation, complexity, etc. that I talked about earlier. The projects in the three month roadmap are then usually further broken down into multiple sprints. Now again, your ideal sprint duration is something that you need to figure out for yourself and it depends on the below factors. The team size you have, the user base your product has. Do you have a few thousand users or millions of users? Are they B2B or B2C users? What's your release cycle like? Do you want one major release every month or are you okay with a release every week? The complexity of the products you are working on. And in some rare instances, the urgency of the product can also be a relevant factor while deciding on the sprint duration. And please note that in the world of software product development, there is no one right answer. You need to figure out the best combination yourself. I have worked in organizations which prefer to make a release every week as well as those which preferred less frequent releases. Based on my personal experience, I prefer to have one major release every month and a smaller bug fix release as and when required depending upon the severity of the bugs. Okay, to summarize the duration point, a decent enough structure for roadmap planning can be a long term strategic roadmap of one year which is split into four short term roadmaps of three months each and each of which is further divided into three sprints of one month each. Now, if you have a rich backlog list with you, then using the criteria as I explained earlier, planning these backlog tasks into a roadmap is a fairly simple exercise. And I'm sure you must have figured out by now, you certainly don't need any fancy roadmapping tools for this. Our good old Excel will get the job done. Please like and share this video if you found it helpful and don't forget to subscribe.